Okay. All right. Seeing that it's 701, I'd like to call the Summersworth School Board meeting for October 15th, 2024 to order. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah Brian Hart. Here. Crystal D. St. Croix. Here. Marsha Brown. Here. Barbara Wentworth. Here. Bridget Jameson. Here. Gemma Soldati. Here. All right. Please join me in the pledge. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your day mid-October. Any comments by visitors this evening? I do not believe there are any. Any outside? No, there are not. Um, any initial comments by board members at this time? Yes. Yes, because I live up in the hill next to the water tower, and I understand that that is being replaced, and it would be amazing to have the water tower painted and I don't I just want maybe it's coming up in the city council report but it would be just amazing to have proud home of hilltoppers or something because it's going to be viewable from our our high school um, baseball field yes. so anyway I just wanted to throw that out there I know that it's coming up for another um, presentation or something um, but I, I guess I'll ask our, our city council rep uh, to touch upon it but I just I am so excited to have that water tower in an area that could be like advertising yes for for our our student athletes and the whole student body so anyway that's yes. i just wanted Great. to yes thank you all right board member clark i just want to kind of piggyback on that a little bit about the students i just wanted to um congratulate all of our students athletes that are currently in football and volleyball and soccer and um, all that they're doing in their sport because they're doing some amazing things and I don't think they get recognized as much all the time um, but I know our football team just came back from a win um, that they were projected to not win I think that's exciting and to have their you know city behind them is so important on the volleyball team same thing they were really close neck and neck and I'm just really proud of them I just want to shut that out that's all wonderful Thank you. Any other board members? We'll have another opportunity at the end of the meeting. All right. All right, moving to agenda item number three, our consent calendar. Um, do uh, we have four items on our consent calendar? And that's it right now. Okay. What's the wish of the board to uh, adopt the consent calendar as presented? Can I have a motion to remove items from the consent calendar? Oh, sure. Would you, yeah, you can make a motion. I would make a mo motion to remove from the consent calendar the, um, maybe I don't have the agenda. It's um, adoption of uh, policy committee min meeting minutes from uh, September and October 1st. I believe that's on the consent calendar. Yep, they are 3.2 and 3.4. They are the meeting minutes from the 24th of September and October 1st. So that, that is my motion, um, and I can explain it if you, you want to explain it now no, you can, you can. before it's seconded. Yeah. Um, reason being, I a second before we explain it? Is yeah. that how it is? Well, yeah, I mean, a brief explanation just for the removal, like the tier of like what, what why it is. They were intended to be in the report section of the policy committee, not in, in the meeting minutes for okay. the board. Okay. Do I have a uh, second to remove 3.2 and 3.4, the policy committee, committee meeting minutes? I'll second with um, more discussion as to. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, time for discussion. I forgot to add in there, um, now that I have the agenda pulled up, there are also the education committee program and community outreach meeting minutes in the consent to cal calendar and I don't know that it's the board's function to approve committee minutes when the, it's the committee that approves those I think we just as a board accept them um, so it's I think it's kind of one of those to inform for our meeting we've had them here before and since it would be informative about how we adopt first reading, second reading, and things like that, it's not. It's they're they are all draft minutes, and the approval mm -hmm. hasn't typically been at the committee side of the minutes. Um, they have been more of the approval at the full board. 
meant, you know, the full board to see them and kind of, because everyone on the committee is on the board, so we can all see them and, and change them when we receive them in our board packet. Um, but they are all in draft form. Usually we don't approve at the next policy meeting because there's policies that we need to see the minutes about to be able to make a motion on at this meeting. Does that clarify? Does anyone have anything else? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it would be like if somebody else had a question about a policy that the policy committee was trying to like change something within the policy, then we would speak about that, how that changed. That's why that committee couldn't approve their own minutes completely, correct? Gives us a time to change it. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I mean, it's really it's really in draft form. And then, you know, everyone on the policy committee is at the, at the board meeting to be able to adopt it for, um, to be one, so the public can see it, and uh, two, to be able to inform our decisions about adopt the adoption of you know our first reading and second reading to see all all the discussion and why we're talking about it. Um, does it seem unusual, Member Brown, that we've done that? Yeah. My my only other question for that is um, yes, the transparency. These are intended to be in the packet, but I had intended them to be in the report because I don't because. We went through the exercise uh, of, as a committee, of reviewing and approving the minutes of the people that were there, and people who were not at the meeting abstained from it. So, since some of our members at the board level were, were not at the meeting, I, I still, yeah. you know, I don't follow the logic that it would be the board approving a subcommittee's meeting minutes. Would and again, you I, you know, we have a draft policy uh, policy committee meeting minutes for October 1st. Mm -hmm. Policy committee meetings for September 24th were approved by the policy committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're saying draft, I, I take it that you're oh. talking about draft in that you're of it, consistent with the position that these are draft to the board. Oh, okay. So the 24th was approved at the October 1st committee, yeah, the policy uh, meeting on the 1st. So that's kind of just moot-ish to not, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be in the consent calendar to adopt it or to approve it because it, we've already done it. But h then how do we present that, these minutes to the full board to inform them? In the reports. In the report? Okay. In the report section. That, and that's... Okay. I forget what I had for the motion, well, but my motion would be to remove them from the consent calendar and put them, put them in, into the reports okay. yep. because that was the intent that they would be public because they were disseminated in the packet. Yep. That was one goal. And then the second goal to be informative. So in addition to the minutes, I wrote up a report, which I hand delivered because oh, okay. it didn't make it into the into the uh, packet this particular time okay. as well okay. um, so that you would have... Two minutes and a, a summary report from the chair of the committee. Do we have them handed out to, have they all come around? I did not, oh yes, board member Saldati, yep. I just had a clarifying question. If minutes are to be considered in report section, then what are the items typically that the board member would review or vote on in the consent calendar? Um, if not minutes, I'm just curious, just as a sort of like the board member, the board meeting minutes, regular board meeting okay. minutes, enrollment reports, data reports, informational reports, um, maybe like memos, uh, things like that, that are more informative and not, they're not, um, issuing, there's nothing about a, being a motion. We can absolutely remove items from the consent calendar to discuss, to put on the rather, but it's more of like informational in consent calendar, but we also want it to be public um, in our packet. Yep. All right, so we have a motion on the table to remove 3.2 and 3.4 and move them down to the committee reports under policy. Is that correct? And, and, and the other, there's one additional, another item, right? Right, that, okay. You know, I'm not trying to be semantic. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, th you know, understand why a subcommittee meeting minutes would be it for the full board to approve in the meeting section. I mean, I, I get the yeah. policy, you know, goals of, you know, transparency yeah. and getting them out there. I think, you know, those are checked off. Um, my motion 
pertained to policy committee meetings uh, minutes. I did not. It would need to be amended uh, for the education program mm -hmm. meeting minutes. But um, um, we can have that. Had as a them there for motion. a while. <laughs> I know we've had them kind of in the minutes for a while, and um, we do look over the minutes at policy, right? Like what we had on our but you know, in budget and ed programs, and and kind of look over that and have that as part of the discussion. Um, yep. Yep. The assistant superintendent and I can also, within the next two or three days, just look to check with the NHSBA and just to confirm whether the appropriate thing for subcommittee minutes is approval, acceptance, and where best in the agenda. Not to interfere with the vote for this evening, but that's our, our responsibility to make sure we're on top of that and we can get back to you quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I was just going to say that um, I'm fine moving them for tonight, but I would love an answer on what the like yeah. appropriate thing moving forward to do is. Um, so my question would be, if we moved in for tonight, would it be an always a movement thing or it would always be down there at that point? My motion is just pertaining to tonight. Oh, yeah. And I would love to know, you know, as I'm, you know, we all know a little bit about parliamentary procedure and order of things. And this is one of these order of things that I don't know. <laughs> but it, to me, it just seemed logical about moving it down to report. But. Okay, so Dottie, then went more. Another just point of clarification or question: uh, What would be a reason that the board would not approve minutes for a board? Like, just considering we have done this, what would be a reason you would not approve minutes from a subcommittee? <clears throat> oh, um, so do you all have answers? Yeah. Well, I have a I have a possible answer. So, if something was within the committee meeting minutes that you are a part of, like that's not how I remember it written, and then mm -hmm. at that point you could say. Um, I don't want that into the, you know, to into amend the, it. Yeah. Okay. For that reason. Yeah. Then James, who had it? Who else I had one? But yeah, I was really just going to say that I, it sounds like it isn't. It's. It sounds like it would be more the board accepting it as an informational report once they're approved by the committee that had that. Was was my thinking about it? That's uh, it just on the back of your agenda. It gives you a brief explanation of what the consent calendar is and what you're doing on it, just so you're aware. But I will, okay, I'll... approval of briefings and reports acknowledges receipt and not necessarily adoption of the report. Um, we've received them. It does say kind of a, approval, but that I think the semantics need, we'll, we'll clarify and get back to the board on what that means. It's been usually informational and not something that's impactful for a change or anything like that. We can have many informational reports that is, it, we're not approving the report, but we're kind of approving that we've received it. It's a re reception of it. Yep, we're member Brown. I was speaking to a prior question of, of why the full board would not approve them because I'm thinking of approval as meeting minutes because when people are not present they don't usually participate in approving right. the minutes that they are, weren't present at right good for, question. The, for the accuracy yep. of it yep no good clear clarity on it I think for now let's move them down I'll say 3.2 3.4 and the um, how would you like to label what you what you passed out um, the report summary on under what I handed out was just the policy committee um, report to the board from the chair. Okay. Report to the board. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Okay. Um, so we have a motion, yep, to move them. It's first and seconded to move 3.2, 3.4, and the report to the board under uh, committee reports policy committee. All in favor say Aye. Hi. Oh, roll call? Um, didn't mean to trip up. I mean, up. I'm going to say nay. Oh. Well, I just feel like. Yes. You don't have to describe. You me. called on me before, but. You oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I almost would like to leave it as it's always been until John reports back to us. You know what I mean? I just want to like stay the course until we find out that it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can, I support 
what you're saying for a, a permanent move. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's 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 there's going to be a two piece to this. There's I feel like there's going to be this what's currently on the table to move it. And then we will still have a motion on the board for the consent or the remaining consent calendar. Right. So we'll still we're moving these down to the pump. We have the vote on the motion right now. So, yeah, a roll call will be quickest. Um, is it clear, the motion? Okay, the motion is to move agenda item 3.2, 3.4, and the current policy board policy chair's report to the board under agenda item 5, committee reports number D, policy committee, to have it there. It's first and seconded by Brown and Clark. And it's just going to be moved for this current meeting. Can I have a roll call, please? Maggie Larson? Yes. Carrie Clark? No. Sarah O'Brien Hart? Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix? No. Marsha Brown? Yes. Barbara Wentworth? No. Bridget Jamison? Yes. Gemma Soldati? No. Is that a tie? It is a tie. <laughs> Where's the, do we bring the mayor in? Am I allowed to make another, are we allowed to discuss or we can't so, while so there's a tie? So a tie, tie. fails. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. A tie fails. Uh, ward, ward four, anyone please come to this board. <laughs> Therefore, there will not be a tie. Um, anyone in ward four that's around Idlehurst and we can, ward four maps on summersworth.com. Uh, you can make comment, yeah. My, I guess my comment or my, my reason for voting no is that I just wonder if the word in, the, uh, in our um, agenda of approval of consent calendar is the issue and not the actual consent calendar itself. Um, if we could change the verbiage to receipt or acknowledgement of consent calendar and therefore the sort of definition is Acknowledge of receipt, yeah, that's what it says more on the back. Um, I will... I will, as a friendly amendment to like how, how we operate without, I, I think that would be a better um, and clearer on our, how our meeting flows. Thank you, board member Soldati. Um, now I am looking for a motion to, con to adopt the consent calendar um, as presented, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4. I make a motion Sorry. to uh, approve yeah. the consent calendar as presented. Okay. I second. Okay, well maybe we'll maybe if you can adopt the acknowledge your the receipt of it. If we can start with that, yeah. Yep. If you can amend your motion to acknowledge the receipt, I amend my motion to acknowledge the receipt of the, of the yeah. consent calendar items. Thank you. Is that all right to second? I second all again. Right. Any discussion or clarity on that? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thought it was going to be a quick meeting, but we'll keep on going. Um, f agenda item number four, our reports, our student re representative will be here at our next meeting. Uh, so we'll move to 4.2, our superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to start by just asking for confirmation that the proposed schedule of district presentations makes sense, um, which is high school on November 19th, middle school on December 10th, special education on January 14th, CTC on January 28th, athletic extracurriculars on March 11th, Maplewood on March 25th, and Idlehurst on April 8th and community-wide initiative and programs, SRT, wraparound services, pre-K um, efforts and so forth, summer and enrichment, uh, all very important on April 15th. Um, just want to make sure I can confirm that. Is that all good so I can uh, let those involved uh, plan on being here at those on those days? There's also going to be presentations on the long-term strategic planning work that we're doing, um, update on kind of those priority level systems work, among other things. But I wanted to lock in all those folks. Thank you. It looks good. Yep. Um, and uh, school board, just an update on the high school uh, elected school board, student school board reps. 
So the uh, high schools have elected, the ninth graders have elected a ninth grade student rep, the 10th graders have elected a 10th grade student rep, 11th grade an 11th grade rep, and 12th graders a 12th grade rep. Those were elections at each level, and the four as a slate um, in recognition of the state law requiring a uh, school-wide vote will be presented to the um, school for confirmation, I think, tomorrow. Um, and then we will have four reps. And their intent was still to focus, uh, to rotate in, just to kind of divide the uh, load up and attend one meeting a month. But I know our board chair intends to meet with them just to kind of make sure they understand the spirit and the, and the welcomeness of their voice and what that might look like. Um, a quick report on the three uh, forums that I held. Um, we had about 23 people total. They were small. Um, but I thought they were pretty good. Uh, the folks that turned out generally felt, I <laughs> see uh, uh, school board member Soldati joined in on one, and uh, we had a good conversation in the library, including somebody who was in the library that joined us when they realized what we were doing, which was uh, pretty cool. Um, community member, not a parent. Um, I thought the folks that turned out generally felt pretty good about things. Um, the thing that I was particularly struck by was um, how well educated they were about school funding, um, about statewide issues, um, encouraging them to get out and vote on November 5th, not in any particular direction, but with education in mind. And uh, they jumped right in kind of with their own thoughts on that one. Um, and I think there was at least in um, that group an uh, appetite for um, boldly moving this district forward and saying, what can I do and how can I do it? And a very small group, but in a uh, community of roughly 12,000 people in a district of uh, about uh, not quite 1,400 students, uh, a critical mass of 30, 40, 50 active citizens saying, hey, how can we make our schools better and what can we do is a pretty powerful thing. And I asked everybody outside of the meeting, I said, if you send me an email in the next few days, just say, hey, I want to be involved. Uh, and about half the folks that came out said, yes, I'd like to be involved and continue to participate. Um, we didn't push really hard to get tons of people to come out because we wanted to kind of keep it small. I was hoping that each group would be about the size of the three groups combined. Um, and the Saturday morning was probably the least popular, <laughs> although yeah, the, the spirit was just to kind of give them as many opportunities as, as possible. Um, to our vice chair's uh, comments, I just also wanted to add that uh, Summersworth was the only high school in the Seacoast Online Student of the Week to be represented five weeks in a row at the start of the school year, which is a reflection on our kids and also on the high school for making the effort um, for those folks to be out there. And a great article about the volleyball team um, ran in Foster's and Seacoast Online recently as well so things just feel good and as you come into the uh, main entrance i'd much rather people be visiting our schools than our central office but when you come to the central office we have a big bulletin board that filled up very quickly of just good things that are happening here in summersworth um, and the high school news tends to get out a little bit more in seacoast online and on fosters so we have to make sure we have good forums for recognizing our middle and elementary school uh, students and all the good things happening there as well um, the joint committee that is currently being formed between the city and the school board, should I say anything about that or wait for, for uh, just? Yeah. Um, just, let's uh, wait. Let's, let's wait. wait. I just want to ask because it's, it's uh, coming out and it, it, mm -hmm. it's just the beginning, coming, yeah. beginning stages of some good possibilities there. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. Great. Um, I think that for the meetings uh, for this board, if I can take the temperature for the presentations, if, when possible, include students in some way for the school presentations. Um, when that's happened in the past, it's been very welcomed, and I think it's been kind of one of those, it reflects in our schools, not necessary to happen, but it, either an invite to um, students or st and staff when that school presents. When we've had students here, it's just been um, well-received by the board, I'll say. Yeah? Yeah? That's they have agreement or should we keep the students out we'll, have, we'll welcome them okay and just to thank you tell you the, the spirit of this was to keep them relatively brief yes. um, involve staff students absolutely um, other folks that are working with the school and and kind of a quick overview for school board members that need to be um, reminded or relatively new to this what exactly is happening within this realm but then just to kind of pick two or three things to hone in on that are particularly good topics or recognize something that uh, students or staff are doing 
as we get closer to each, feedback on how, how we'd like these structured would be very welcome. Yeah. That's the spirit of it. Information about how things are going in our packet or for the board are great for like the informational, not as fun stuff. But during this time, it's kind of condensed to no longer than 20, 30 minutes. It's nice to kind of highlight and have it feel like the community-wide school um, presenting rather than a, than a chore. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. All right, moving to 4.3, our business administrator's report. Um, thank you, Katie. I've decided I'm going to have students come and do the budget reports, too, so that way it'll be easier. <laughs> Uh, anyway, included in your packet is the update as of October 11th. Um, all salaries and benefits for staff have been encumbered. Um, we do still have um, some positions open, uh, eight paraprofessional and one case manager open that are not encumbered. They'll be encumbered as we um, fill them. All out-of-district placements, contracted services, and transportation for special ed students have been encumbered um, based on the current students. We do have a savings right now in the area of out-of-district tuition due to students moving out. However, I've been notified that we have some students moving in. I was notified again today of another one moving in. So once we have final costs on those, I'll encumber those and see where we're at. Um, there is an overage right now in special ed transportation due to uh, a number of McKinney Vento homeless families that have moved into the district and required transportation. We do work with the other districts to split the costs when we can to you know, minimize the cost for our district. Um, going into next year's budget, we are it's one line item right now for uh, special ed transportation, so we're going to break it out for the budget going forward so that the board can see, you know, what attributes to out of district, homeless, and all of that, so it's a clearer picture of that one line item. Katie, clarifying on that, what's the, is, what, is there reimbursement for that cost for McKinney-Vento from any source, state Besides or splitting it with other districts, there are, there is it's no. A, it's completely, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, da, da, da. I've encumbered all the contracts for transportation, technology, copier leases, waste management. Um, we are showing a savings in the area of CTC transportation due to a grant that we received through the Department of Ed. Caitlin uh, worked hard on getting that grant approved, so that's paying for a portion of our CTC transportation, so that's great. I've also encumbered an estimate for utilities for the rest of the year, and I'll adjust as we go forward. John and I are meeting with all building admin in the next few weeks to look at both current budget and start preparing for next year's budget. Um, in terms of revenue, um, we've received our first payment from Adequacy for the State of New Hampshire and some preschool tuition payments. John and I attended the City Council Finance Committee meeting on September 26 to discuss the request for a supplemental appropriation utilizing the additional adequacy funds that I mentioned in my last budget update. Um, in your packet is the memo that we sent to the um, committee to request those funds. Um, they are going to be utilized to fund the additional kindergarten teacher and phase two of the technology upgrades. Um, so John and I will be attending the city council meeting on October 21st, um, where the council will um, vote whether or not to allow us to utilize these funds. In terms of food service, the expiration date for carryover for free and reduced lunch um, ends this week. Letters have been mailed to all families twice um, to have them fill out an application. Um, if they filled one out last year, they have 30 days into the new school year to as carryover, but once that expires, they need to fill out a new application in order to qualify again. So we've sent that out to families, hoping that they'll fill out a new application. The verification window is also opened. Um, we're required to verify income on a sampling of applications that are submitted each year. The system randomly selects a number of applications and letters have been mailed to those families to submit pay stubs to verify their income. If they don't respond, um, they revert back to paid status until they supply the documentation. I think it was about three families that are chosen. Um, under joint loss management, um, the Department of Labor Safety Division visited our district on September 26th. Um, they're visiting all districts in New Hampshire to make sure we're in compliance with all the laws regarding employee safety. I'm happy to report that the visit went very well. Um, they gave us an A-plus for our visit. We had um, The board had approved our safety plan and the student pre violence prevention plan, so we had everything up to date. So I just want to thank the Joint Loss Committee for doing all that hard work over last year, except, except uh, especially Mike Bluen at the high school. He was our chairperson for the committee, so they did a lot of hard work last year. And then um, the FY26 budget, we are starting our preparations for the budget going forward. John and I, as I mentioned, we're meeting uh, the week of November 4th with our building admin to go over their preliminary budgets. And that's all I have. Any questions for Katie? No? Yep. <clears throat> can, I, can I provide some comments on this topic, or do you want me to wait? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, you absolutely yeah. can provide comments. Okay, yeah. all right. So this is just very briefly, this is kind of my my soapbox. And I think some of the things Katie has said have, have um, started me off well for this. So, um, you know, what I've heard from residents kind of across the board and, um, you know, people coming to talk to us is that people are looking for transparency. Um, and I wanted to just comment on what, as somebody who works in districts and works in a lot of different districts um, and works with systems, um, just just what I want people to understand as um, taxpayers and citizens. Um, and it's really that school districts have like a massive amount of legal obligations to fund different things. Um, and so that is, those are federal obligations, those are state obligations. Um, your question about the McKinney-Vento really points to that, right? We're, we're federally, federally required to support homeless students, um, and there there is not a funding source for that. That's just kind of on the district. Um, and if you live in an area with a lot of transient um, people, right, you're going to end up with more making any vento needs. Um, and we don't have any control over that um, as, as taxpayers, as a board. Um, the district employees don't have control over that. Um, special education it tends to be another area, right? We can have big costs there that we don't necessarily have a lot of control over. Um, and I think the, the higher need district you're going to have, the more things you're going to have to legally fund. Um, and I want people to kind of be cognizant of that as we get into budget season that mm -hmm. um, we don't put things in the budget, right, for for these like really, really over the top lofty things. Like there are a huge percentage of, percentage of our budget are things that we are legally required to provide and fund. Um, and I, I just kind of want people to think about that. Um, there's also, you know, the more preventative we get, the more money it saves in the long run. It's kind of like the old... Um, the story about the boots, right? If you buy a pair of $100 boots one time, right? Um, they last for a while. If you have to keep buying a pair of $30 boots, they, they don't last and you have to do it again and again and you spend more money. So the more proactive we can be in providing supports and providing everything that we need to, um, overall, you know, that reduces expenditures. And so I know sometimes it seems like the district is asking for and asking and asking for things um, but we really don't have control over a large percentage of what's happening and I, I just wanted to make people aware of that so. thank you received heard all right thank you Katie for your report and yeah moving forward uh, agenda item 4.2 our city council update uh, councillor parody kitten zero thank you welcome thank you um, that was perfect segue. Uh, I was going to bring up two, well, I was going to bring up one thing that specifically pertains to the school board. And then uh, since um, school board member Brown brought up the water tank, I'll mention that as well, because there's a couple of updates there. Um, for the school board, um, a supplemental appropriation request that was uh, read as a first reading in our last meeting. And this upcoming meeting, um, is it next Monday? Let me just double check that, is when the... Um, the uh, public hearing for that will be. And we, so the finance committee had um, presented to us that the, um, the supplemental appropriation request, um, he sort of gave some background, the committee chair did on the adequacy funding that, you know, as we all know, the budget usually is typically underestimated and hopefully there comes this extra money um, which is not extra money, which is uh, for the adequacy funding and that it was um, explained that this was for some technology improvements which are underway and an additional kindergarten teacher. And while the council has no jurisdiction over how the money is spent, that that was the understanding and that it all made sense and, and moving forward. But um, just to let folks know that there is a public hearing on that and I am just going to 21st. 21st. Yes, okay, thank you, the 21st. Uh, which is next Monday, is the public hearing for that. So if anybody has any um, comments or wants to get involved in encouraging um, this uh, to pass or has any feedback, um, please come and let us know. A lot of times uh, on city council, things come before us and we don't necessarily hear from people. So it's really, really helpful when people come uh, and let us know about that. Um, so that's my update there. And then the, um, the water tower. So... I don't know anything about the um, 
the external design of it. I love the idea, and I've, I've heard it before, of, of artwork on the water tower. But I did just want to let folks know um, that we are, we sort of paused approving a location um, because we weren't really sure. We were looking for some uh, essentially renderings or like a map and a picture so we really know what we're doing before we approve a location. Um, but currently um, the recommended location is not the same location as the current one um, because in order to do that we would need to uh, take down that current water tower and then it would be offline for however long it takes to construct the new one. Uh, it's also a place where there's a radio transmitter and so it's a, um, a safety concern not to do that. Um, so there are a few different locations nearby or um, there's one that would potentially impact the skate park, there's one that would potentially impact um, a playground, there's another one that would seem to avoid impacting either of those but we just want to make sure like what's it going to look like. Um, it was explained to us that um, it is uh, a large sphere on top of a big tower, so not, you know, sort of a, a column shape as it is now. And there's one very similar like it behind like the Five Guys Starbucks Exit 9 area. So that will give you a, size of the, a sense of the size and scope. Um, so it will be obviously something that is very visible at some point, but at this point, it's just sort of like going through approvals. So again, um, pay attention to the city council packet um, for the next meeting as there will be contained and there are some sort of renderings about the different locations. So again, if people have feedback on that, please uh, come and let us know. Um, and I do love the idea of art and especially if we do end up with two, I don't know what, like it hasn't been discussed about when the other one would come down, but if that's a lot more real estate for art and from my perspective, so maybe we can, we can deck that one out as well. But I really love the idea of um, putting some sort of Summersworth branding on it uh, to make it a welcoming thing and not just a big, uh, a big sphere floating above the trees. Do we, are there, are there photos in the, um, that you, that you're aware of? Cause the one that I'm thinking of is massive. It's very large because it's, again, instead of just being a column, they're looking at the same amount of capacity of water, but just on a big, if it's higher than the water pressure is better, I guess yeah. is the, the, the idea behind that type of a design. Mm. Um, so hopefully those renderings, that's what we asked yes. for. We're like, we're not going to vote on this until we know what it looks like. We yeah. can't really picture it right now. Um, there was a map included. Um, I don't know how helpful it would be if I tried to hold it up and share it, but of just the locations that were proposed and apparently that circle on the map is supposed to be roughly the, right. the size. Thank you. Is that it? Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. All right. Moving to our committee reports. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Councillor Parody, I was just curious to know why, what, why are we getting a new water tower? Is it like, oh. Yeah, I just didn't know about this. Yeah, that's a good question. So the the current water tower that we have is due for replacement. So it's something that's been discussed for the last few years. Does it make sense to start to fix it or keep putting money into trying to fix that old one versus, you know, the let's replace it now type of a, a smart investment type of a thing. So if, if we didn't have a new water tower, uh, it would start costing us a lot more money to try to repair what's starting to um, deteriorate on the current one. Okay, great, thank you. All right, committee reports, we'll start with um, standing committee, um, I'll start with budget and revenue, which I am the chair of, and we just had our first meeting of the year um, earlier this evening, and it was the uh, proposed draft of the SAU 56, which is the central office um, operating costs that we are required to um, pass to and give to uh, Rollinsford, uh, SAU 104, to be able to have them develop their budget um, in December, by December, mid-December. Um, it, uh, it is in draft. It is not the approval of the budget for us. It is what we can do now, which is not ideal time to be able to do a, have a budget be created when we don't have figures and numbers and things like that. So that was our first kind of um, reading and looking over the SAU um, budget, which is, again, the central office administration costs and everything having to do with the, the building uh, on um, West High. And that um, will be in your... 
packet at the next meeting, you know, all that information, we can get that out. Or if you need it to see it, you can just contact me or Katie and we can share the um, details of that budget. Anything else, budget members, um, that we spoke about? No, nope. I think that was pretty much it. We adjourned at 6.15 this evening. Our next budget meeting is um, November 4th at the SAU office at 5.30. Uh, Building Grounds and Transportation Committee, Board Member D. St. Croix. We have not met yet, um, but we are scheduled to meet on October 29th. Okay, great. At the SAU office? Yeah. All right, perfect, at 5 o'clock. All right, and then Ed Programs and Community Outreach Committee, um, Board Member O'Brien Hart. We have met twice since the last meeting. Our first was on uh, September 30th. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Why, hello. No, uh, the first was on September 30th, and um, we have a lot of very excited people who really want to do good things for the district, as we all are here, right? Um, our first meeting was about just bringing forth ideas and setting priorities for this year and continuing to to keep track of priorities we'd had uh, last year, just so we didn't lose the thread on any of that. Um, so we wanted to uh, take a look at the, you know, are we going to move forward with the Diploma of dis Distinction, which we've decided to table for now. Um, get some updates on the Student-Based Health Center, which is going really well. Um, and we found out tonight, actually, that they're at capacity. Um, so that's great, or at least, uh, what's his name? The therapist, therapist. behavioral, yeah, is, um, at capacity, so that's great. Um, still room for, of course, medical uh, appointments and stuff. Um, and then uh, some things that came up from last year. Last year we'd looked at, you know, how can we support uh, attendance in the district and how can we support food security in the district and uh, outreach and communication to families and, and involving the community um, as a whole. And uh, um, we raised a few other ideas from um, that first meeting, we were interested in the peer mediation, uh, like what's the status of that in the district, what's the status of uh, recess, um, what's that look like for the district and SEL, um, how are we supporting that, especially at uh, the middle school, um, looking at the State Council for the Arts. Um, and out of all of that, the priorities that continue to emerge are, is the, that conjunction of attendance, um, food security, and connection with community. And so, um, even as we talked tonight, this is something that the committee, uh, amid other priorities, really wants to dig into for um, the foreseeable future. How can we um, support our, our students and families being more food secure? How can we uh, continue to increase attendance? One thing we found out was that um, in September, the high school reported that 30% less kids missed classes um, in September. Than, so, the, previous. than the, previous, the previous September? Previous September. Yeah, okay. and so they're attributing that one to the attendance policy, but two to just kids wanting to take advantage of their education. So that was really heartening to hear. Um, we looked at uh, 68 hours of hunger. We know that there are uh, bags at every school and that it's being well run. Um, I've learned that tonight, like, um, uh, there's some information about maybe the possibility of a food uh, pantry, for, so I've got to take that to the committee, but um, we want to continue to look at what 68 Hours of Hunger has to offer. We did look at um, what New Hampshire Hunger Solutions had presented, and uh, budgetarily we weren't sure that that was something that would work out, but as we continued to talk, we really were thinking about, like, how can we balance the needs of the district to maintain their budget, and at the same time, the needs of admin and staff to maintain, like, their time and then also like students themselves maintaining their, their and families food security. So one thing we wanted to do is um, we were wanted to ask the policy committee um, to review policy. Um, I think hold on, I highlighted e it in my notes. E F A A. Yeah, E F A A. Um, it is the Student Food Service Meal Payment Charging and Meal Account Management Policy. It's about a year old now. I think it was adopted September of last year. Um, as with any new tool, we wanted uh, to ask for a review. Is it working in the way that it was intended to work? Uh, it seems like there might be a burden on um, administrative time in like, managing this policy and tracking it down. Is it serving the students, but also is it working budgetarily for the district and like, recouping uh, what we needed it to recoup for financial reasons and, and just ha is it effective and in, in, in that. So that was one of the major outcomes of that. Yeah, thank you. I think it looks like an like an, an, an ask for a superintendent to like look into what that looks like and then potentially get it on the policy committee. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.
I have a quick little um, question that popped in my head about the health care health clinic and um, insurance as with families that um, maybe want to use health clinic, but then um, have their own private insurance and how that is being run. I don't know if it can be answered today, but that triggered a thought from a community member that reached out to me that said that they didn't believe that their insurance was billed for their child going to the health care clinic. I'm not sure if that's within our wheelhouse to look at. I know it's an outside source, but um, it was sent to them quickly and then their insurance was never billed. So I just don't know for our community members how we'd go forward with that. Because if they're being billed, you know, a large amount, they're not going to send their child to a healthcare clinic if they can just pull them out and bring them to. But in this case, they weren't charged. They were charged. Oh, they were charged a large, large amount. amount. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And because they, their insurance, their insurance was not charged, but the the um, the families were charged. Okay. But they they gave their insurance to the health care clinic, and then correct. They well, this is from what I was told, okay. but this is great. Um, it just triggered thought that if we want our families to use this health care clinic, we'd be sure that you know they're successful successful and they're billing insurance and then not just immediately charging families right that's going to a large burden so we think that that's one of the things that would be in like a good question that the superintendent and others will look into and then it would be in the consent calendar to see you know without violating anything but the percentage you know in general you know what what the what the process is from um so maybe Goodwin, outside of warehouse right yeah a little bit more for the public to kind of see the the what the percentage of insurance or how, how things are kind of going with that with billing and things like that right but an overview of it but without that's great specific all right yep just to quickly follow up on that i would be interested in the list of what insurances they're taking because i wonder if if that might be part of the concern i don't know if we are regardless i know i'd asked that once before and i was never given a list okay. that's up. a great yeah that's great yep all right thank you moving to our policy committee policy chair brown Put my mic on. Um, so, you had you know our earlier discussion about our, our September twenty fourth, twenty twenty four me meeting minutes. I did give a summary of that in our at our last board meeting because it was that meeting was held the same day. So I won't cover that for brevity. Um, and I did hand out a uh, a summary of um, at least from the chair's perspective of the uh, of the first reading and second reading. Um, policies and the importance of them and if I could just uh, reiterate for the public who may be new to our policy uh, naming convention it pulls from the New Hampshire School Boards Association and SAU uh, 56 has adopted that naming convention for instance uh, policies beginning with the letter A concern foundation we have some of those tonight policies begin beginning with the letter G concern personnel and policies beginning with the letter J concern students and further down in our policy adoption, we're going to have a discussion on um, under 7.1 policy ACN, which is accommodation of lactation needs, and that's on your in your packet at page 17. The reason for this, uh, the changes um, in 2023, there were changes to the Federal Pregnant Women Workers Fairness Act and New Hampshire RSA 275 colon 78 through 83 governing lactation needs of employees. And so because SAU 56 is covered by these laws, the federal and the state laws, um, we needed to review the policy. Um, in substance, the term nursing mother was replaced with the term person with lactation needs. The reference to sexual harassment it, now in the federal law is uh, termed sex discrimination. So there were no other substantive changes to the policy. We still kept the purpose, the accommodation notice, the plan requirement, the list of minimum accom accommodations, and so we felt that it was ready for first reading. So that's going to be under uh, policy 7.1 or our agenda item 7.1. The other pol the next policy ADB, drug-free workplace, drug-free schools. This policy was last updated in March on March uh, 12, 2019, there were no changes that needed to be made to this policy. 
Uh, thus, the policy committee was going to note in the source notes at the end of the policy that it re simply reviewed the pol the reviewed on October first, twenty twenty four by the policy committee. Um, we aren't rec recommending any um, revisions, and I know that the agenda item seven point two says it's ready for first reading. But as a policy committee, we weren't recommending it for first reading because there were no changes. So I don't know what we want to do with that disconnect between what was coming out of the policy committee and what we have for our agenda item. Um, the next policy that the pol policy committee reviewed was ACF. That did not make it onto the agenda, so I am going to defer that food and nutrition services, anti-discrimination and civil rights complaints policy. I think it would be best to move to the next meeting on October 29th. So I'll skip over that again because it was it didn't make it into your packet for some reason. Um, under the next policy was GBAM, which is accommodation of pregnancy and related medical conditions uh, that appears in your packet at page 23. Now these were because there were new um, EEOC rules in 2023, um, or actually there, there were new EEOC rules in response to the two. 2023 Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. The rules went into effect June 18th, 2024. The policy language in GBAM is straight out of the New Hampshire School Board's um, Association's Legal Council. So this is um, largely a new, po new, new drafting or new text of the policy. So that one is ready uh, out of the committee for first reading to you all. The, the last uh, first reading policy is JLDBB, which is Suicide Prevention and Response Plan. There is, this is an existing SAU 56 policy. It was last reviewed four years ago in 2020. It was due for review. Also, we had um, an RSA, 170, uh, sorry, RSA 193J, Suicide, suicide Prevention Education. Uh, that was updated in 2022, so the policy last being revisited in 2020 needed to be reviewed. So we re recommended that for first reading. Um, the other policies that we will be discussing later is for second reading. That's the policy ACA and ACAC. At our next meeting, I will you know, be circulating um, the proposal that we talk about IHBCA, which is one of the last ones in the the list of attention um, or needing attention from the School Boards Association. And there are also a couple that um, are rescinded because we previously will be uh, dealing with AC, uh, policies such as ACA and AC, and those rescission uh, policies are suggested as JIE and KED. We don't have JIE, but I think we should go through the exercise of looking at it, KED. Um, and then I will add the EFAA, <laughs> hearing that tonight, as a potential to review at our next meeting. So sorry for the okay. long no, report, a, but I just great. wanted to give you the backstory on why these policy changes are needed because they were legal changes. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so EFAA and um, the policies that did not make it in, I see ACF in our um, policy notes, the food and nutrition services, anti-discrimination and civil rights complaints, which is a brand new policy we spoke about. So the ones that we need to bring forward was ACF, board member Brown, and there was one other one, or is that it? That didn't make it to the list. It was just ACF. Okay. It didn't make it into your packet, okay. which I don't think because you haven't seen it yet in the packet, mm -hmm. shouldn't be mm -hmm. on our, right. you know, first that reading. That and EFAA, I think, would be related since it regards, yeah. it's connected to food and yeah, nutrition I, so it makes sense that yep. if we're going to have our next policy yep. meeting and if you know the same Heck subject them. can be discussed it between those two policies yep. yeah thank you all thank right you for the question perfect all right thank you and then our eyes on 30 city committee board liaison board liaison soldati do you have an update no we haven't met okay, since perfect. our last meeting but nope. i also did want to ask if i for the new committee or the new ad Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something, or do you want me to say? Uh, 
Well, let's do that um, with future meeting dates and kind of how you talk about it since it's not on the agenda. We, we would have to put it on there, but we can put that um, towards the end of the, um, the uh, meeting here. We have no presentation this evening. And I like, actually, I may want to move um, policy to be the last one um, on the uh, committee reports because it's a better flow to kind of talk about it and not, and then move eyes on 30 or another one before that just because it makes sense to kind of to keep the discussion going. I'll, I'll, maybe, a, um, although there's a presentation, of course, we'll have that, but it's nice to have it in our, in our heads earlier. So moving, to, yeah, moving to policy adoptions, we have one, two, three, four policies for first reading. Uh, do we have a motion to read these titles by? Um... Motion to read these policies by title only. Yeah, we have, yes, do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, all in favor say aye. aye. Clarifying question. Yep. So is there four? Because I thought that we weren't moving the, um, drug-free workplace because there's no changes. Yeah. I thought there was just three. It, so it's interesting when we, do, when we review something and we don't make any changes, we did review it and at the very bottom it'll say like, okay. reviewed this day and there's no changes to it. So it's nice to kind of- So would it still be our first reading then? Um, it's t the first reading is because we reviewed it. Okay. So it's better to kind of get it out in circulation in public to say, okay, we've reviewed this, right? So now we've reviewed it. If someone in the public says, we want to add something or we don't agree with this or Summersworth needs X, Y, and Z, they'll have the opportunity to comment and put it out there. I'd rather have it be out and kind of reiterated in our public sphere than, than you know, if we don't change anything to it, it can still be out there. There's just no changes. Thanks for clarifying that. But we're still moving it forward because we reviewed it. Um, so uh, we'll go through, so these are for first read. Uh, yeah, if, um, remember Brown, if you can go by title only, please, for our first reads. Sure, and if I can comment, I appreciate the clarification on who reviews the policies and makes that source note. If it's mm -hmm. at the board level or the policy committee level, it was a gray area at the time, um, but it's in our, um, ADB is in our packet, so I will include that in our first reading. So uh, the first policy, it, are we going by policy? Do you want me to read all of them or? Yeah, just your the policies okay. for first reading just by title and name only. Okay. The, yeah. Policy ACN, accommodation of lactation needs. Policy ADB, drug-free workplace slash drug-free schools. Policy ACF. Food. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no problem. It's just not policy on our agenda. GBAM, yep. accommodation of pregnancy and related medical conditions. And last, lastly, uh, policy JLDBB, suicide prevention and response plan. Thank you. Great. These are, are for first reading. They'll be um, up for adop adoption at our October 29th meeting. We have two policies for second reading and for adoption. We'll do them. Um, uh, with distinction, you know, with each one separate, but do I have a, another motion to read these by title only? Or would you like to read through the um, verbatim? They are, yeah, title only, do I have a motion? I motion to read these by title only. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. It may be extra, but sometimes it's just, you know. Um, all right, so first one for motion is, uh, Policy ACA, Discrimination and Harassment uh, Grievance Procedure. Do I have a motion on the adoption of this policy? A motion to accept Policy ACA, Discrimination and Harassment Grievance Procedure. Second. Second. Any discussion regarding this? Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All right, it's adopted. I'll go through um, 7.6 ACAC, Title IX, Prohibition of Sex Discrimination and Sex-Based Harassment um, Policy and Grievance Procedure. Uh, this is a second read. Do I have a motion to adopt this as presented and put it into policy? Motion to adopt Policy ACAC. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion about this policy? I would like to just kind of... Um, Shout out and appreciate Kat Crosby for her hard work and many hours of training and up to date. It was a big 
lift and change and it's very needed and you've done a lot of work on this and we've this is the easy part here of moving it forward because we know you've done your due diligence and mm -hmm. work on it beforehand so thank you for that um all in favor of adoption say aye aye, aye. okay thank you adopted uh we have uh, new business 8.1 that we're going to move into non-public under um, 91A3 uh, <laughs> under B 91A3 2B. Um, we have no older un unfinished business. We have all of our future meeting dates. There's also um, we typically kind of have agenda uh, future ad agenda items, but really, if you'd like an agenda item to be put on the on the next thing, just contact me. This is not your only time to say it. Contact me, and we'll we'll get it on there. Um, our next meeting is the 29th. We only have one meeting in November and one meeting in December. So I would encourage committees to do their work as much as you can now, because the only motions for adoption for any change for anything forward happens just at these regular board meetings. Everything else, all the work is done um, in committee and by our hardworking staff and administration. All right, agenda item 11, uh, comments by visitors. Oh, yes. You said in the... In oh, yes, you can. Yeah, oh, well, I was going to say in your um, in your board report, but yes, please, please, board member Saldati, please... Um, you're excited. Let's at go. The, at the request of Chair Larson, I am starting an ad hoc committee for arts and culture in the school district. Um, we have set a date for the meeting. It is going, our first meeting will be Monday, October 28th at 3.30 at the SAU building. Um, anyone's welcome to join. It will include um, our arts uh, and performing arts teachers across the district. Music and well, that music. Music, that's music that's and that's theater, theater and <laughs> dance and <laughs> painting and ceramics and almost anything could be an art, truly, if you think about it. But we're gonna have a great time, so please join us. Yes, so, so board member Soldati is the liaison for an ad hoc. It's different from a committee, it's no motions are made, it's kind of a discussion and being able to promote the arts and music and everything in our, in our district, I believe. Stephanie is is the admi administrator on this. Yep, on this committee. So any ideas, please go to Gemma. Thank you for that. It, it's on the committee assignments, and board member Jamison, I think you're special ed. So thanks for being an um, advocate for that as well. Um, which you don't. No rush. All right. Any visitor comments? Seeing none. Um, any uh, comments by board members before we go enter our non-public? Yes, board member Jameson, followed by Brown. I just wanted to quickly say um, that I loved hearing that people in the community are informed about fair funding, um, and I would just encourage everyone to go to Fair Funding New Hampshire and look at legislation for that and contact your representatives because that is how we move the needle on public education funding. Thank you. Is it board member Brown and yep. then Saldati? Yep, um, I just wanted to say I look forward to um, having our student reps. I'm excited to have a rep um, for each grade. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I noticed that tomorrow's governor and council meeting um, in Meredith, there's on the, their agenda is a $5 million um, out of DHHS, but it's um, USDA money, uh, $5 million for food in electronic benefits transfers under the USDA Food and Nutrition Program, and something about 44,000 students um, next summer will have um, food during the summer. It's a summer food program, and so I don't know much about it, but I saw that blip go by, and I just, I would love to know more about that, and if we are getting any money, <laughs> so. I just wanted to remind folks at home who are tuning in um, to register to vote, and you can register downstairs, and the absentee ballots are already in, so um, some folks have already voted, but please keep November 5th in mind otherwise, and get out there and vote. And I'm going to do another plug for Ward 4. Ward 4, if you're watching, <laughs> come on over. This is amazing. We need to not have ties in votes. And uh, reach out to any board member. Uh, welcome. Um, I will always pick up the call and answer the door. So 
board for and echoing our students are doing amazing and we're 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 a really proud community and um as you can as you can as you can tell and hear from these advocates on the board so with that looking for a motion to go into non-public under 91 a 32 b which is uh, personnel and hiring of a public employee i motion to go into non-public for 91 a, a 3 2, two b, b. Yes. non non-public personnel second second Okay, can I have a roll call, please? Thank you. Maggie Larson. Yes. Carrie Clark. Yes. Sarah Brian Hart. Yes. Crystal D. St. Croix. Yes. Marsha Brown. Yes. Barbara Wentworth. Yes. Bridget Jameson. Yes. Gemma Soldati. Thank you. Is everyone leaving? And then I'll just write the, yeah.